You're a sop. You're a soppy dog, aren't you? Oh, you're going to be a star. Star of the show, aren't you? Some people, I'm sure, love harvest. To me, this is actually the most stressful time. This is the bit where, having got it this far, it can still all go wrong. We're in a good place. If there's no rain today. And there's no, well, there's no rain forecast. Like, yeah. the worst that'll happen is the combine breaks down. Then we're in trouble. Ideally, we'd have started at 11, but um, you know there was no way we were going to get started at 11. Even at 12 o'clock, it was still pretty damp at the base, which means then when you're harvesting it, you're getting all that moisture up onto the grain, so you bring the grain moisters up, and the straw kind of won't go through the combine very well either. The first thing actually is to see how far round the combine gets before he has to unload, because that That's tells us what the yield part. is like. Well, it's the, yeah, you see, it's a fun view. It's exciting. It's anxious for me. It's trying to see what the yield is like, um, because obviously we get paid per ton. So the more tons we get, the more chance you have of making some sort of a return out of it. Can we have a bet where, where <laughs> Well, we're not going to be able to see him, hopefully, because if, if we see him come back around here before he unloads, I'll go home. <laughs> we won the, um, the best barley grower back in 2016, so I have a little blood tub down there, which they won't give me yet because I'd be the only person with Waterford whiskey in the world, and I'd have every journalist trying to break into my house to get a sample of it. She's happy out. Just as long as I can make sure she doesn't end up in the combine, then everyone's happy. Hey. Leo! 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 How many years are you farming here in Ballykilcabin? It's 380 years this year, so hopefully I'll get to 400 years of family history here. I did a computer science degree, and then when my dad retired, I took over the farm. I always felt that no matter what I did in terms of sort of early career, you know, I was always going to come back here. I like sowing time. Well, some people, I'm sure, love harvest. To me, this is actually the most stressful time. This is the bit where, having got it this far, it can still all go wrong. I wouldn't have slept a lot last night because you're always... Well, I'm actually... It's not... I'm sort of always a bit worried or anxious about what's going to go right or wrong. Um, barley growing is a little bit out of your control. Like, it's fine. This year has been a good year, so the weather's been fine and everything's, everything's gone well with it. This is the, the day when you get your results. And this is... My dad always said, like, harvest is like the leaving cert every year. Dolphining, we call it. <laughs> Where... Leo. Doesn't need any help to go over. <laughs> Good dog. This is her first harvest. She's having a great time up here now. So she came from a housing estate in North Cork, so she's delighted to have a bit of farmland. This uh, is a positive, the dog going to the farm story. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, ready to go again now. It's great, actually, when you finish harvest. It's fantastic. It was the first day of relaxation is when you get it into the shed. It's only actually celebration once the loads are accepted into, uh, into Dalton's down in Kilkenny. That's when you can relax a little bit. The usual thing is, like, if it's done badly, you blame yourself. If it's done well, you say, I oh, was sure it was a good year. Um, so you can't, you can't win, but it's, um, it, has, it does look like it's doing well this year. So hopefully it'll, we'll find out now shortly once we, we get the first few results out of this. There's always something to worry about. whole field's 18 hectares. It's completely surrounded by trees, but so that headland under there is only just starting to get the sun now. So that will always be less ripe than the top part of the field. That's a bit closer to Kildare as well, so that's always slightly inferior. <laughs> but there's a bit of a stream down the far side, so it's a little bit damper down there, so that's probably not quite as ripe as the rest of the field. And then probably when you get to the high point in the middle, that's the sandiest bit of the field. That's where you'll get the ripest grains. So dominantly, the soil here would be quite sandy. Oh, it's very sandy. Day. Remember a couple of years ago, you said to me, after the 10th day of dry weather, you were like... <laughs> yeah, and it's not popular. Nervous. Not popular in my house, because like a wife and three young kids who don't want it to rain. Yeah. But you do need sort of, you know, five or 10 mils of rain every now and again, just to keep it moving. This land, I mean, all around here, I would say is very, very suitable malting barley territory. It's good, dry soil. And you don't want too much nutrient in the soil because that'll affect the protein levels in barley. But you'd always have fields that you'd say, that field is more suitable for malting barley or even say that field is more suitable for distilling barley than brewing barley. You know, it's going to give me low proteins. Historically, it's given low proteins uh, based on either the soil or the surrounding trees or the way the wind blows on it or anything like that. Um, hungry fields. Hungry fields, hungry yeah, exactly, fields, hungry yeah. fields. We have plenty of hungry fields around yeah. here. They're a bit ravenous. We're going to get a different maybe flavour of, of whiskey out of this field compared to this field. We might get better barley for distilling out of this field than this field. So it kind of, you know, brings it on another level in terms of, of the end use of it, not just the crop itself. I do like whiskey as well, to be fair. I do. I do like my whiskey. Yeah, yeah, I do. I have, um, I have a, 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 well, I wouldn't say whiskey collection compared to a lot of people, but I do have a, a nice range of, and all Irish have to be, you know, none of this. My Scottish wife wouldn't approve of none of this, none of this foreign stuff. As a farmer, I was always, interested in what happens to whatever we produce once it leaves the farm. 
we can go down to Waterford and we can see our barley coming in as, as malt and get to taste it as the new make off the stills, get to make the cut to the hearts. Uh, you don't get to do that everywhere. You know, I mean, that's really the only place that you can do it on a distillery site. And to be able to go down and see that actually in production and then see it as it matures and, and hopefully get to taste it a little bit later on as well. Um, that, to me, that's what makes it exciting. That's why it's great to be involved in this project. If there's a bottle of, of Waterford whiskey released and it says Balakal Cabin on it, I know that's my barley. That's what gives me the thrill in terms That'd of growing it. That'd be a great day if there was a bottle of whiskey with Balakal Cabin on it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we'll, stick that, we'll stick that up in pride of place.